Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. So we had to leave off yesterday on a little bit of a cliffhanger with this uh, with this show because uh yeah, we uh yeah, Nick's uh Nick's eyes started to twitch because you know, we'd been down here watching a fair amount of anime and um staring at screens all day. Yeah. And um for certain monitors it's not that bad, especially the low blue light, high refresh rate monitor he has upstairs is and plus he also has his uh his uh, gaming gaming glasses up there too, and I don't like to wear them during videos because they look weird. So, well, it makes you look like an old school pimp from the seventies. Something look yeah. like Al Davis or something like that. It's like just win, baby, just win. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to go old man there, but run, bitch, run. Kill I kind of sound like I kind of sound like an old man. You know, I you know I'm still recovering from the uh, the assault on my uh, my immune system. That was uh, the pneumonia, and I, for the most part, I'm over it now. Still got a few rudimentary coughs here and there, and my throat still sounds like, uh, you know, it's got about three sheets of sandpaper in it, but, you know, you live and you learn. The uh, the last episode we left off on, they were uh, being beset upon by a bunch of spider demons, or or just one spider demon, and people who were being controlled by said spider demon. So well, there was a second spider demon. That oh, wait, that's up. right. Yeah. And he, uh, he called her his mother. He said there were five. Oh they were shit. A family. Well, there you go. I mean, it just goes to show you. And, and so far, uh, Tanjiro and, uh, uh, you have pretty much ran into nothing but other demon slayers, uh, who are of the similar level to them, you know, beginners we found out that they were going to be sending in higher level demon slayers including the one that saved uh that saved tanjiro and nezuko originally uh, i forget his name uh but yeah i forgot to but you know if we see him again it's a short that's, name but i already forgot it yeah uh but if we see him again oh damn it's going to be interesting to see what he thinks of how tanjiro does things so I don't know what the hell's going to happen in this. I'm hoping that we uh, get some good action, which with this series is all but guaranteed uh, with pretty much every episode. I can only think of like one or two episodes that lets you just, that we just enjoyed the scenery and the characters and everything. But for the most part, the action in this series is friggin' amazing. Anyway, we uh, got the uh, got the video queued up here. Let's give it a watch and let's see what happens. こいつ<笑><笑><笑> <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to see why people like Inosuke. Inosuke is a hothead. Uh oh. Oh god. Dislocated her shoulders. Oh, great. Oh, there's bones popping out of those. 
<laughs> That's fucked up. Ew. That right arm is just basically jelly at this point. <laughs> I've heard a walk like an Egyptian, but goddamn. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so we're wrapping I see. the thread around the trees. Oh, marionette hanging them up. <laughs> Yeet. <laughs> oh, is that an ogre? It looks like a big demon or something. Oh. <laughs> She's gonna detach. Oh, oh no! No! That's fucked. Well, fuck her then. Fucking demon bitch. Very, very upset by that. You go. All that work that he that they did to try and save them. All for naught. Yeah, about that. Oh, shit. You don't got a head. I really don't know how she had a demon that was just pock permanently decapitated and its body didn't disappear. Incoming!
さんが父さんに怒られてる<笑>あの目優しい目優しい眼差しを抜けられていた気がする。Shit. So, uh, yeah. There's always those, like, reflections that the demons have, you know, as their life flashes before their eyes of wh who they were before they turned. Seems like it. Yeah. It's like that meme I showed you. It's, it's not really Tanjiro as the demons, but, like... Yeah. It's like, uh, every time Tanjiro kills a demon, and it's like the crying Spider-Man, like, meme, like, uh... Yeah. To Toby Maguire, but like with Tanjiro's like hair and stuff attached to it. <laughs> yeah. Earrings and everything, but it's, it's not really him who's crying, it's more the demons. <clears throat> but they all have like very sad, like Dark Souls style like stories to them and everything. <coughs> anime where everything has a tragic <clears throat> tragic backstory. No, well, not in every anime. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. It's, definitely this anime. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this one... <clears throat> Every demon that's been killed has pretty much had that reflection back. Me like, I used to be somebody. Yeah. I could have been a contender. <laughs> or not. I mean, the whole I thing. I could have won the county giant pumpkin awards, but he came and turned me into a demon right before the presentation in the county fair. Yeah. Damn. I had... I had a brother once. And then... And I had then, a girlfriend. I had a, she was kind of a bitch, so I'm not really that worried about that. <laughs> and so I became a demon. Jesus. <coughs> it's like every time you hear... Every, it's like every time one of the demon's heads gets chopped off and they start dissolving away, all of a sudden Johnny Cash's hurt starts playing. <laughs> I hurt myself today. Who was I? Really? I see it always being like all around me are familiar. Faces. Oh yeah, that one's but even not, better. Not the goofy meme version, but at least like the serious. No, yeah, the version. Gary, the one from Donnie Darko. Yeah, the Gary Jules version. That one, that one still puts chills down my spine. It's a good song. It is. It's creepy. It and. It, I like its version better than the original. The original is by uh, it was a Tears for Fears song, I believe. And now, and and now it's taking on that meme because of that one kid that all around me are familiar faces. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't the Who do a version of it? The Who? Or am I thinking of a different song? I know the Who. See, I know. Uh, behind blue eyes, the who? Oh yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Did that version, or did, or that was their original, and then Lint Biscuit remade it later on. Yeah, because it was like, it was okay. It was actually kind of like a meme before Familiar Faces became the sad meme. It, was, it was, I'm, I believe is why I would mix them up. I don't behind know who, like, blue you know, eyes. Like, Nobody knows what it's like to be the sad <laughs> man, yeah, bad man to be the sad man. Behind blue eyes. But then people replaced it with. Uh, all around me are familiar faces. Yeah, they with, they replaced uh, Behind Blue Eyes with Mad World. And I, I think that's a more fitting thing because Behind Blue Eyes, not all bad guys have blue eyes. See, I already liked Mad World a lot from Donnie Darko, but when the first Gears of War trailer came out, I was oh, like, dude. oh. Donnie Darko was the first place I heard it too, but then, like you said, when the first Gears of War trailer came out... Like, it just made it all the more better. And he picked, <laughs> I remember... Him picking up that statue head and, like, half the head was missing. Mm. Going around all these, like, ruined buildings. Dives into this one building. 
and it's just a sea of like glowing eyes and the one like corpser comes out and he starts shooting at it and it like, like as good as the game was that was like one of the few cases where like the trailer <laughs> was probably even more genius than the game <laughs> yeah well the game was completely different it didn't have a oh. it didn't have a somber tone to it at all it no, was well the only time Pure they did... Pure testosterone-fueled chainsaw and motherfuckers well, in half and blowing their heads off and watching their eyeballs shoot across the way. The shit. only time they effectively pulled that off was in 3. That was it. Yeah, I don't think I actually remember much of 3 because I played 1, 2, and 3's campaign, but like I just... At that point, I was playing it just to play it. For some reason, it didn't stick much in my head. Oh, dude, it stuck it Was 3 me. where Dom found his wife finally? Or was uh, that 2? That was 2. Okay, yeah, so two was the most memorable part where he finds his wife, and I was just like, fuck. That was memorable, but for me, three, uh, Dom, uh, this is no spoilers because it's pretty much been ten years now, when Dom sacrifices himself. Yeah, I definitely barely remember that. So I don't even know if I played three at this point because of that. I might be thinking of Halo. Maybe. Yeah, I'm thinking of Halo. So I never played three. Fucking no. hell, I just spoiled that. <laughs> oh, well. I, I knew Dom died already. I had it spoiled a long time ago. Well, so. that moment... Well, here's the thing. I want to... I, I'll tell you about this. You probably I think that was one of those things where I had it spoiled, like, not long after the game came out. Fucking that's part bastards. part of the reason why I just didn't play Fucking it. bastards. I hate yeah. people that do that. Me and my cousin, Zach, Gears of War was, like, our game that we played every time it came out. Like, me and him... You know, we played several games together, you know, growing up. You know, we had uh, the Re- Resident Evil 4. I remember when I first went over to his house and I helped him beat Resident Evil 4. For him, it was like a God-tier gaming moment where he was just like, Oh my gosh, finally! And I'm like, see man, it's not that difficult. You just gotta... <coughs> you just gotta <coughs> play the game smart. You gotta do this, you gotta do that. You gotta manage your resources. And then uh, eventually... Uh, when Gears of War came out, I remembered I went and got it, and I invited Zach over, thinking, oh, we'll probably play this a little bit. We stayed up. Uh, we started playing the game at about 7, maybe like 7.30 p.m. We didn't stop until about 4 in the morning. Straight. Just nonstop. And, oh my gosh, like we did that every new game that came out. Gears of War 2 and 3, I'd go get it from the store, I'd invite him over, and we would play. We would just play and not give a crap what's going on the next day. And then when Gears of War 3 came out, I remembered me and him were sitting there, and that part happened. Where Dom died, we both had to sit back and just, like, like take a moment because, you know, we'd been with these characters for three games. And, you know, whether you know how you feel about Gears of War, I know for you the primary reason you didn't be like, like to... killing off Sully in, like, uh, Uncharted 3 or something. Like, that would have been, like, fucking awful. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Well, they um, thankfully they didn't. Yeah. Was, Sully's, like, one of my favorite characters ever. But the primary thing about that is that the loss that you feel for characters. That's just like, I, I know the main reason why you didn't care about Gears of War as much after the first one was because of the multiplayer thing. Yeah. You hated the change that they made multiplayer and you hated the fact that you could stick grenades to, uh, to, to surfaces. Yeah. And thus it pretty much just made it. A, it gave people but a free camping. kills without them having to do anything skillfully. So yeah. It, it pretty much just became a camping simulator yeah. at that point. So and, the first game was about charging the fuck in and knowing how to like have the fastest reflexes and do it in ways that they weren't going to expect and shit, you know. And then yeah. like the last of the match was like a skillful like who has the best aim. Like it had like two different phases or almost like three different phases of the match. And like cuz it was like rush in at the beginning of the match, get initial kills to lower the team numbers and then play based off of how that goes. Yeah. And it was just a lot of fucking fun. And it was just always so satisfying when you would kill people. And then they basically took that first phase and just were like, nah, fuck that. We're ending that. Like, by letting people just stick their grenades wherever they wanted. Because if you rushed in, you just hit someone's grenade and they got a free kill. So it was bullshit. It completely fucked up the flow of the multiplayer for me. 
And the flamethrower made it worse because it fucked up mid game because whoever picked up the flamethrower is just going to kill anyone who's trying to be tactical and hide behind cover without having to do anything but shoot at the cover that they're behind. So they could literally like walk out completely in the open and like flame th- flame your cover and you would fucking die. From it. <coughs> it was they fucked it completely up with those two changes. Like in my opinion, from what it was originally. Fair enough. <clears throat> like the original one, like we spent so much time like learning and like developing our own strats and stuff and getting really fucking good at it. And it's probably one of the best I've ever like one of the games that I've been the best at. Like along alongside my group of friends that played it, and like as a team, like we were fucking decent at that game. Like well, I would say, like if it had a had like a pro thing at that time, we probably would have been considered close to semi pro, if not semi pro, because we got so fucking good at it. Nice. Like we rarely lost, but they fucked it all up in two, and all three of us were just like, "Nah, we're good." <laughs> So, I don't know. But, yeah, the campaign was still fun in 2. I remember having fun with 2. I just don't remember what happens in it because I only played through 2 once. And 1, I remember still a lot about because I played through it, like, multiple times. And I played through it on the hardest difficulty. So, I have, oh, shit, here they come, still stuck in my head. (laughs) From dying on the bottom of those stairs before the guys with the boomers. Yeah. Over and over again on the hardest difficulty. For me, uh, well... I will say this, the Ultimate Edition of Gears of War has something in it that I think you'll enjoy. You know, or especially in the campaign mode. You know what that is? Hmm. Uh, they have a part that was added in on the PC version because it wasn't ready when it was released on Xbox. And thus, it's... It, it's on pre- which one did you say? Gears of War 1. Oh, okay. It's, I didn't know that. It's right after you leave uh, the emulsion plant and are on your way to the uh, Phoenix Estate. There's like a big gap there that is just a big gap of time that doesn't explain anything. There's nothing explained there. And it was included in the PC version. You actually stop at a bridge, and you have to get the bridge to lower so you can get across, but all sorts of shit goes wrong. Mm. And when me and Zach played through that again later on, we were just like, oh shit, like we would never done this before. And it, it was really cool going through that again. It's but, been so long since I played it, I don't know if I would remember it or not, but, like, I might be like, I definitely don't remember ever doing this part, <laughs> like, when I started playing it, you know? Yeah. But uh, eventually, on stream one day, I'll play it again, like, on the PC, because well, I would like to do that anyways. I couldn't pl- play it as well on Xbox well, anymore anyways, because I'm too used to mouse and keyboard now. <clears throat> well, when that happens, you know what we can do? We can do crossplay. You, me, uh, Jacob, and Chad can all join up and do uh, and can do co-op and stuff like that. That's a four-player co-op on the first game? Uh, no, not in the first one, but in the uh, fourth one. Oh, okay. Fourth one, there's four-player co-op. And uh, so We could do it to where, like, uh, me and you co-op one through three, and Chad and Jacob co-op. Well, they co-op like the, with us. Or, or just switch off every game, you know, you know, co-op with a different person each game. And then when we get to four, we can all join together as a giant group. No, three to, three has four four player. Oh, when we get to three, then, like, so. Well, maybe we, we can, can do that. We can switch off for the first two, you know. Maybe we can do I'll that. I'll co-op the first one with you and then co-op the second one with Jacob and you and Chad co-op the second one or something like that. Okay. We'll see what we can do That'd with be that. be interesting. I think so. I think that'd be really interesting. All right. Well, so it's definitely a series I do still like, especially in single player mode. So, like, I would play it again. All right. Sounds good. I mean, I, we'll have to give it a shot. And plus, like, ever since I switched to PC gaming, I've had a thing for re experiencing things I played on console on PC where possible. And it's usually very enjoyable to do so. It, it's I've done a, that it's a with lot different. Metal Gear Rising. You, you have no fucking idea what playing like Metal Gear Rising on console with 30 frames per second or less versus the PC with limitless. Yeah. Like it's fucking legit. <laughs> it was so much more fun on PC. Um, like LA Noir, like just the graphics difference. Yeah. Like PS3 has a lot of fucking jagged edges and shit and just it looks so good on PC. Grand Theft Auto 5. Everybody already knows about that. Yeah, PC is god tier. Yeah, it's god tier compared to console. Like that's the game that if you ever want to see the actual difference and actually be able to tell the difference, go play it on PlayStation Three. Oh, dude. Then go play it on PC on a good PC. Fuck, dude. I mean, 
Already on older games, I've noticed it too. Like, I've been playing the Assassin's Creed games here recently. Yeah. And you've been playing the Far Cry games here recently too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I played Far Cry on console and stuff, and I don't think I could play Far Cry on console anymore. Like, now that I've played it on PC with good frame rates and stuff, because it's a Twitch shooter. It's addictive. You know, like, you want to be able to hit people in the head consistently. Like, on console, like, literally in Far Cry, like, you, I would play that shit, like, just body shotting people, you know, because that's what you basically have to do with that frame rate with a fucking controller and yeah. let the auto aim help you. But, like, you're, when you're playing on PC, you're, like, blasting people in the face over and over repeatedly, you know? Like, yeah. you're clicking the heads, like, it's, it's a lot more. It's like, pop, pop, pop. Like, Blood Dragon, as cheesy as it was, felt fucking awesome because I felt like it was a video game version of Future Man. And just, like, some of, like, the dudes, like, when I was, like, popping their heads and stuff, you know, and everything. Like, I, I don't know if you guys watched Future Man, but, yeah. Anyways, I'm I'm rambling, like, on and on and on about shit that's yeah, not relevant Yeah, we need to get into the other stuff and uh, yeah. get done with the evening. So, again, everybody, thank you all very much for tuning into this. This was Demon Slayer Season 1, Episode 16, Letting Someone Else Go First. So, I guess, for now, that's going to do it. And until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace out.